Okay. Hi everyone, thanks for coming to our YouTube channel today. Uh, the video that we have to show you is all about building responsive UIs for Power Apps Canvas apps. Uh, with me in the session is Brad Frere. So Brad is uh, one of our uh, expert Power Apps developers, and he's going to be walking us through some of the key details uh, around working with Power Apps Canvas apps and making them responsive. So I'll let you take it away, Brad. All right, thanks. Uh, so big things is when you're thinking about uh, power apps and your cameras and how everything is going to be uh, laid out. I mean, the big thing is how are you going to be executing the application itself? Uh, you can have a mobile version, you can have a canvas version, uh, but you know some users are going to be using uh, perhaps both. So uh, you know you want to make sure that what you're developing, what you're presenting to them, looks good on you know as many screens as possible. So you got to think about that. Uh, other big thing uh, when you are working through uh, what you're designing is make sure you have a good plan. Uh, if you have a plan up front, uh, later on and things invariably change, and they always do, uh, then basically you, uh, you can slot those new fields, for example, uh, right in there. And it shouldn't uh, uh, mess with the plan too, too much. Uh, you know, when you're thinking about uh, responsiveness, uh, thinking about the screen width and height is important. Uh, basically, how all those different fields are going to move around in their, basically, in their space. So, uh, one of the things that we use typically, uh, and this is just an example that I got up here right now, and this is kind of what we're going to be going through. Uh, but one of the things uh, we use is the uh, uh, infinity scroller. So, basically, you don't have to worry about your height too much. So uh, basically, any uh, objects that you place on the canvas uh, when they uh, basically rearrange themselves because of screen size, if they have to go to you know, something where a user has to scroll, uh, we use that particular object so there's, uh, you, know, you don't have to worry about it so much. So, uh, so what I want to do is I kind of want to jump in and I'll just kind of show you guys kind of where we're at right now. Uh, right now, I just have a really basic application here. We got. Uh, Employee in office and a couple text boxes. Uh, if we kind of show this right now, screen gets smaller, they don't move, they don't go anywhere. So if for whatever reason your users are on a smaller screen, you know things would be cut off and they'd have to scroll side to side to kind of get uh, where they need to go, and that can be a little uh, frustrating for end user. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to make these guys responsive. Uh, first thing you got to do, uh, jump in here. And we're going to go into our app settings. So we already have an app set up. Uh, we're going to go into our app settings. And over here on the left hand side, there's the screen size and orientation. So you can click on that. And then down below, there's some settings that you need to change here. So scale to fit, uh, basically, we're going to turn that off. Uh, Microsoft does a great job of, you know, if you're just building something, uh, going to be the same kind of interface for all your users. Uh, they do a great job of basically scaling it appropriately. Uh, so, but because we're going to be the ones controlling all that, we can actually turn that off. Uh, and uh, by turning that off, that actually turns off our uh, lock aspect ratio as well. And then the last one here is lock orientation. You can turn that off as well. Uh, where we've used this before, if a user is, for example, executing something on their phone, on their phone, uh, or on a tablet and they change the orientation of it, we still want our fields to be responsive and uh, kind of lay out properly uh, regardless of orientation. That's great. Can you scroll up just a little bit? I'm worried the yeah, yeah. Uh, team controller is, is hiding the uh, the lock orientation. Can you show that part oh, again? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, just down below here, it's just the lock orientation. Yeah, yeah. right. OK. Yeah, just so that's turned off. Okay, uh, so the big thing, so we're in here, we're in our pretty standard form here, and I'll make that a little bit bigger. Uh, so I've just dragged and dropped these guys on the on the canvas here. Uh, nothing too uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, one of the things that I do when I'm you know making these uh, apps, uh, I like to kind of have a, a standard uh, text box size. Uh, if I know, well, for example, text box size. If I know what that standard size is, then I can kind of write my formulas uh, around that. Uh, and it also works like if we had some smaller fields that would track like uh, province or uh, postal code, we can 
slot those in down below there as well. And, you know, you could have it half the width of your standard uh, text box. So uh, it plays well to it. Uh, where I set that is just basically on the, my screen here, and I have it on the uh, on visible. So we just uh, I set a kind of context for or sorry update context, just kind of like a, a variable that's uh, applicable to this particular form. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just setting the uh, the uh, width to uh, 406. Uh, and then the big thing too is you got to make sure that your widths on your text boxes are actually set to that as well. So and you can see here, I haven't done that. And we can choose that. And we can do the other one there as well. So now they're kind of, they're inheriting that standard width that we want to use. And so that'll, once again, play nice into our formulas. Uh, the one concept that I like to use as well is kind of having a kind of anchor type object. So that anchor object uh, could be like a label, uh, or it could be your form. Basically, it's going to be the object that is going to be not not necessarily static, but you know, it's going to be the the main object that all the other uh, fields kind of wrap themselves around. So, in this particular instance, we can make it our employee uh, label, uh, and <clears throat> basically for its y-axis, we're just going to keep it where it is. So, you have the y set to 44 there. And that's kind of where it's going to be. So if your screen changes or uh, the orientation changes, then everybody's going to kind of move around the employee label. Uh, so when we get into the x-axis, uh, so basically your fields can move around on the x and y axis. Uh, so for this particular one, uh, we're going to put in a formula. Uh, so this particular one, or sorry, this particular formula looks at a couple different things. And I got the formulas written out here already. And what I'll do is I'll just copy and paste them in there and kind of talk through what they do a little bit. So basically what we have is we have our app width. So we're looking at the width of our application. So uh, it could be different kind of wherever we're executing it. Uh, so if it's on a tablet or a phone, wherever. Uh, and we're basically saying, so because right now we're going to have uh, two in our planning, we decided that we're going to have uh, uh, basically two columns. Uh, so our bar standard width, uh, we already set that. So basically we say if our width of our application is bigger than uh, two of our standard widths, then basically keep the layout that we've kind of got here. Uh, but if it's not, then that's when we want things to uh, move around. So basically in this first thing, so, we're, uh, so basically what we're saying is uh, we're having our app width divided by two. Uh, so it's going to cut the screen in half, and basically we're going to position this leftmost label in the center of the left half of the screen. Uh, and then if uh, if it's uh, less than if it, sorry if it's if it's less than the standard width, then we're going to uh, move everything over to the left hand of the screen. Pretty straightforward. Uh, so what we can do for that is this formula is nice because we're going to use it on basically our whole column for all of our other objects as well. Uh, so what we can do is, uh, so we've done that for our label already. We can click on our text box there uh, and then we can just scroll down and we can just copy and paste it directly into there as well. Uh, and you can see, and we can move these guys over because we haven't done anything with them yet. So you can see it's more or less centered there on the left hand of the screen, which is nice. Uh, so the other thing as well is you have to think about the Y axis. So uh, we already covered the Y axis for the employee label. We kind of know where that's going to be. It's our, we kind of put that in as 44. Uh, so for this guy, uh, this is our text box for our employee. So we always want to make sure that it's basically directly under our employee label. So what we can do is we can go to our Y axis here and so what we can do is we can reference our employee label. So y, and we're just going to say plus 40. So basically that's going to say uh, this text box should appear wherever the employee label is plus 40. So uh, plus 40 pixels. So it'll always appear underneath there, which is nice. So on the other side, we have our office to deal with. Uh, so once again, you know, that going back to that concept of a uh, Kind of like an anchor object. 
So in this particular instance, we have you know another anchor object up here. This is our second column. So our uh, office label is going to kind of be the anchor for that column as well. Uh, when you're thinking about responsive, though, uh, when the form changes, you know that anchor on this particular side is going to disappear, and we're going to use the other anchor, our employee label. Uh, so if we click our office there, and once again, I have the uh, I have the formula already, so I'm just going to copy and paste that guy in there, and we're going to go to our x-axis and just paste that in, and there we go, and you can see it's more or less moved over. Same formula as well. We're going to use that for the x uh, sorry for the uh, x-axis for the office text box. And put that in there, and it's nice and kind of shows that as well. Uh, and so then what we're going to do for this guy, uh, so it's Y is 44, so it's the same as the employee. And then what we're going to do is we are going to have a different formula in here for the X. Uh, sorry, for the, for the Y, I apologize. So it's going to be kind of the same formula as we had before. But in this instance, what we're going to say is basically, so if our form will fit nicely, uh, basically side by side, uh, we're not really going to do anything. So, so if it's greater than that, then basically what we want is, oh no, yeah, okay, no, <laughs> okay, yeah. So this is right. This is, so this is always going to be underneath our office label. Uh, sorry, our label off. There we go. So it's always going to be underneath there. Uh, and conversely, you know, it's it's going to be the same no matter what. Uh, so for both, so we can actually do it like that. So it's always going to be underneath there. It's for our office variable, sorry, our office label up top there where the Y is going to change uh, if the screen changes. So what we can do is we can go copy and paste that uh, formula in there again, and we'll just tweak it a little bit, make some changes. So basically, it's going to say uh, if our screen is, uh, is is great and we can put them side by side, uh, we can have it at 44. Uh, and you can see it kind of moving around there. Uh, but if it's not, basically, then what we're going to do is we're going to want our, it's, we want it to appear underneath our employee text box. So we'll just type that in and then we'll say plus 40 as well. So there we go. So basically what's going to happen is we have our employee label. That's our kind of first anchor. And our employee text box underneath is going to be related to our employee label. And then over here, our office label is basically going to stay there if, as long as the screen size is great. If not, it's going to move over to the left-hand side. And because we set our Y uh, access or Y property there, it's going to move itself right underneath the employee text box. So once we've kind of got that all in place, and I think we do, uh, we can just save this guy and we're going to publish it. And we'll publish that guy out there. And we'll go back to our Power App here and we'll refresh. We might have to refresh twice. I've noticed it kind of. Yeah, we'll refresh it one more time. Let's pick up the old one. So there we got them side by side. So that's what we were working with there before. And what we'll do is we'll just kind of squish these guys together here, and there we go. So they move directly underneath each other. So, and then of course you can move them back out, and you can watch them kind of get closer and closer until they finally, you know, smash into each other, and then they position themselves nicely. So can you uh, snap? Uh, so sorry, increase the screen size so they're just touching, and then like go again, just so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, and then like go of the screen so it updates in the video. Yeah, oh, okay, it's pretty so quick. Let go now. Okay, so we can see that that they're connected. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then you know the biggest thing is, you know, while you're working on this, uh, you can get uh, quite far in your application. You can have a, any number of fields under here. Uh, the one thing that I did notice is that uh, if you actually do. You can select one of these guys, and if you accidentally move it to the side or you know up or down, uh, your formulas actually disappear. You can see that turned back to 804. So uh, Control Z is your friend in here. <laughs> so make sure you undo what you did, and uh, that should uh, get you right on the way. So yeah, that's about it. Awesome.
That is a great introduction to building responsive Canvas apps. And, uh, thanks everyone for coming to check out the video today. Thanks Brad for uh, sharing this with us, and uh, we appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, bye. -bye.